Hey everybody, it's Nate from Adventure in a Backpack. Today I'm bringing you a product review of the Sony A6000 digital camera. Whereas this is not exactly a piece of outdoor equipment, it seems like I get asked over and over again by other outdoorsmen which camera I use. The biggest selling point on the A6000 is, without a doubt, the size and weight of this camera. Here's a comparison of the A6000 and a Nikon D7000. With smaller lenses on this body, this camera rivals the size of many point-and-shoot cameras. Actually, when I initially was researching cameras, I dismissed this one because I thought it was a point-and-shoot without the manual shooting settings I was looking for. I have become very confident with it, but I know there's some features that I haven't yet used, which means this camera is not one that you'll grow out of quickly. The Sony A6000 has all of the standard shooting modes like its Nikon and Canon counterparts, like aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, and a few other special shooting modes. The shutter speed goes from 1 4,000th of a second all the way to 30 seconds, plus a remote bulb shutter release. Another awesome feature of the Sony A6000 is the speed of its autofocus. This camera has several focus modes, and the continuous autofocus is incredible for moving subjects, not only for pictures, but especially for shooting video. For those who are shooting action photography, animals, or birds in flight, the rapid fire of this camera is incredible. Check it out in RAW and in JPEG. And apparently, if you get a faster memory card, it will burst at this speed or faster for longer. This camera can also be a Wi-Fi hotspot so that you can wirelessly transfer pictures from your camera to your phone or computer. I find this particularly handy for pushing pictures to my phone so I can edit them on my phone and then upload them to our social media sites on the fly. Also on the Wi-Fi topic, the Sony A6000 can connect to the Sony Store and you can download various camera apps that will give your camera greater functionality. For example, I have downloaded a time-lapse app which gives full control of a repetitive shutter timer, which is a necessity if you're going to be creating time-lapse videos like this one, or for getting stills from an unmanned camera. Let's talk lenses. I have the two kit lenses that came with the camera. The shorter is a 16 to 55 millimeter, and the longer is a 55 to 210 millimeter. If you are new to non-point-and-shoot slash phone cameras, lenses can be pretty confusing, and they can get really expensive in a hurry. If you are a beginner, I recommend going with the kit lenses because they will serve their purpose for you and they'll produce some great shots. The biggest reason I say stick to the kit lenses is that you will eventually learn why big, better lenses are, well, better. It took me many thousands of shots to reach the limits of my lenses, but when you get there you will know. In the meantime, the kit lenses do a very good job. Now, there is a new version of the Sony A6000 and it is the Sony A6300. From what I understand, the main difference in the two is that the A6300 will shoot video in 4K as opposed to 1080p HD of the A6000. But know this, if that's an influencing factor, but you don't really know why you're shooting in 4K, you're going to need a very, very powerful computer to edit those 4K video files because they are gigantic. If you're looking to just make some awesome movies on Facebook, YouTube, or even shooting some film with more lofty goals in mind, 1080p can shoot just fine. Ultimately, this is an awesome camera. If I were to get another camera at this exact price point, I would get this camera, the Sony A6000. If you have any questions about this camera that I didn't cover, post them below in the comments. Thanks for watching.